Today, I will show you how the bedding that I use in my sleeping area has evolved since moving into my car. I had originally tried to replicate the look and feel of the bed that I was used to sleeping on. As time went on, I became comfortable with living in a car, and my focus shifted from trying to replicate my previous living conditions before car living to focusing on the simplest and most efficient way to live in a small space. Here is a video clip from the first video that I posted on this channel, which shows my original bedding design. So I've got several layers of bedding that I'm going to try using um, because I really want to create a comfortable space to sleep. You know, it's already going to be a sacrifice giving up my apartment and living in a car. I figure the best thing I can do is to try to at least make the sleeping space uh, the bed as comfortable as possible. So I'm going to start with this this uh, sleeping bag that I have. It's a camping sleeping bag. It's a Coleman and I'll put the link to everything that I use uh, in the comments below. I'm going to start with this. This is a heavy sleeping bag, well padded because it's for uh, cold weather use. I'm not anticipating cold weather in Silicon Valley. Uh, so I'm going to use this just for padding to sleep on. Okay, so that creates a pretty good initial uh, padding, but it's really not that soft. And so what I'm going to do is I had a pillow top uh, cover that I bought for my queen size bed in my apartment that set on top of my mattress and underneath my sheet. And I took it and I cut it to the size I need for this sleeping area. So I'm gonna add this to it. And then the other thing that I can do is um, add one more layer to this to just give it even more uh, comfort and that's using a camping mattress. This is what is called a self-inflating mattress because as I take it out and spread it out, it'll suck the air into the mattress and inflate it. It's the first time I've unpacked this, so it was a little inflated and tough to get out of the bag, but it'll get easier next time. So again, this is another layer. And when I lay this out, I can even inflate it more if it's not self-inflating to the level I want. Actually, what'll probably make the most sense is to put this underneath, is to put this underneath the other two. Now, I may decide I don't need all three of these layers of padding, but the nice thing is between this pillow top and the sleeping bag, I get some really nice, comfortable padding. And I probably will go ahead and continue to use this mattress under here because it's a little stiffer. And so when I put my twin sheets on, um, I'll be able to uh, fold them under and kind of put them underneath that more rigid board to hold them in place. Now, one of the things that I have here that's an issue is this is very slick. So I'm afraid as I'm moving around at night, um, that this is going to slide around underneath that twin sheet and just become a mess. So I'm going to do one other thing. So I bought this. This is just one of those mattress pads. Or I'm sorry, rug pads that go underneath rugs on hardwood floors to keep them from sliding around. And so I'm going to take this and put it on top of the sleeping bag to create a non-slip surface for the pillow top to go over. Okay, now that's not going anywhere. It's, it, it's got that uh, non-slip mat underneath. 
and even if I shift around this will shift a little but it's not sliding at all so that'll be perfect to keep that in place and so I've also got my fitted twin sheet so that I'm not laying directly on this and getting it dirty over time And so there you go. I have a nice twin sized sleeping area. As you can see in that clip, I was trying to replicate my pillow top bed using a system that had multiple bed layers and sheets. However, as I experimented with different approaches and got used to sleeping in a car, I found that a camping style approach was the most efficient. Ultimately, I settled on using a small camping mattress as a base layer, which eliminated the hardness of the sleeping surface, and I now sleep in the sleeping bag on top of that mattress. I got rid of the comforter and sheets, and I got rid of several extra pillows that I had brought from my old bed. The simple system of pad, sleeping bag, and one pillow is enough to create a comfortable sleeping area. Those items also take up a minimal amount of space, and they are easy to manage and clean. I wash my sleeping bag and one pillowcase when I do my other laundry. The other thing that changed over time was the positioning of my body. Here's a clip from a video that I posted on day 137 of living in my car, which explains how my sleeping orientation has changed. This picture is of the inside of my car when I first arrived in Silicon Valley after moving out of my apartment in Denver and never having lived in a car before. Things were organized in a way that I thought would logically work and everything was in its nice, neat place. One of the first things that changed was the orientation of my body when I sleep. As you can see, I started off with my head near the front of the car because that is the highest area in the car where I could sit up and have some headspace if I wanted to be in a sitting position. However, over time, I realized that sleeping with my head toward the rear of the car and my feet in between the front seats made the most sense. With my lower legs and feet between the seats, I am in a defensible position if someone were to try to break into my car because they are likely to break in through the front doors. With my feet pointed towards them, I could best defend myself by kicking. Fortunately, I haven't had an experience like that, but you have to think of those things when you start living in a car. Having my feet between the seats also makes for an easy transition in the mornings. To get up and into the front seat so I can drive or exit the car, all I have to do is take my legs out of the sleeping bag and literally slide into the front seat feet first. It only takes a few seconds to make that transition, so that also makes it easy to get to the driver's seat if anyone ever knocks on my window in the middle of the night. What that clip and the first video clip both show is that living in a car means adapting to new circumstances. Minimizing my life down to the essentials has forced me to evolve a different lifestyle and mindset. I now value simplicity and efficiency over trying to maximize my possessions my space, and my comfort. It is a trade-off that I am glad I made because it helped me to reprioritize my life. My life is now focused on what is most important, how to spend my time, and what to achieve during that time, the time that I have left in life. Well, that is my video on the bed or bedding that I use when I sleep. I hope that you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. In my next video, I will talk about my nightly sleep routine and the quality of sleep that I have gotten since I began living in a car. As always, please feel free to leave any feedback or questions in the comments section below, and don't forget to click the subscribe button to find out about my future videos. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video.